Alright, welcome back. Today we're going to take a look at graphing polynomial or solving polynomial inequalities. One of the easiest things you probably did last year in Algebra 2. But we're going to take a look at more of a, of a calculator, a calculus perspective. Now the first thing we're going to do is to find something that we call a critical number. Now in Algebra 2, a critical number is something that you called a root or an x-intercept. Really what's happening at a critical number is something special is happening. Critical numbers, what we call CNs, identify places on the graph where something special occurs. Where something is occurring. Now, for the most part, it's the area where the graph goes from positive to negative. So, we can identify critical numbers, like if we take a look down here, very simply. So, to review from the Algebra 2 method, solve the following and graph the solution. Now, from Algebra 2, what you would do is you would find the zeros, which we call the critical numbers. So, the first zero was 3. Our second zero was negative 1. And on your paper, what you would do is you would draw a number line, and you would put in your critical numbers, negative 1, and 3. And you would pick some values in between. Like uh, if I give a number be less than negative 1, like x is negative 3, between something like x equals 0 and to the left or to the right of 3, like 5, and you would plug those in. Negative 3 minus 3 squared is positive. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative. So this was a negative value. If I plug in 0, of course, that stays positive. And if I plug in the 0 for the 1, also positive, so this becomes positive. Plug in the 5, positive. Plug in the 5 here, 5 plus 1 is 6, also positive. And what you would then do is now you would solve. I want to find out where this is greater than 0. Of course, greater than 0 is where is the function positive. And you can look at the graph to do this. We would be positive between negative 1 and 3, or from 3 to infinity. You have to stop at 3. We can't include 3 because 3 is our critical number, and we only want, and it's where it's equal to 0, we want it greater than 0. So if we take a look at number 2 here, do the same thing. Get your critical numbers. 0, the negative 3x gives me 0. 2, negative 5. So when I graph my critical numbers, now this time we want less than 0, so we want the negatives, or 0. Okay, that's what that less than or equal to. So if I go negative 5, 0, 2, please put them in order. If I check before negative 5, like negative 6, looking at all the factors, that's negative. That's being cubed, negative, squared, positive. So two negatives and a positive make a positive. And I'm going to put, because I can include it this time, I should also circle those in. If I pick something between negative 5 and 0, like negative 1, two negatives make a positive. Oh, I made a mistake. Hopefully somebody didn't, hopefully somebody caught that. If I plug in negative 6 here, that should be positive, which will make this a negative. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. All right, so negative 1. This becomes negative still. And this becomes positive. So it stays negative as well. 0 to 2, I might pick x equals 1. Negative, negative, positive. That becomes positive because two negatives make a positive. And if I pick something after 2, like 3, we get negative, positive, positive, which is negative. And now where is it negative or 0? I look at these different areas. That's where it's negative or 0. So I would go from negative infinity, always a soft bracket. Now, because I can include the 5 this time, I'm actually going to go all the way up to the 0. Or from 2 to infinity. Now, I can include the 2 and the 0 because of the equal to sign, and that's why those are hard brackets. Now, that's a review of Algebra 2. We're a little bit older and more mature than that at this point, hopefully. So I am going to show you Mr. Wernow's slicker than snot way of doing this. And it's all about 
knowing how to do polynomials. This is a polynomial. If I know its type, watch what I can do here. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is x to the fifth. It's odd positive. I know what odd positives look like. What are my roots? Easy breezy. Negative 1, but it's m2, 3, m2, and negative 1. Again, negative 1, so that actually means I get negative 1, m3. Be careful with that. And 3, m2. So that's what my graph is going to look like. Watch this. I sketch it. I'm at negative 1, it's m3, and I look at 2, it's m2. Now, the only difference is we don't care about the y-intercept necessarily here. So I'm just going to kind of sketch it. Because it's odd positive, it starts down, ends up. And I just graph it. It wiggles through the m3, and what's it going to do with the 2? Bounce up. Now, how does this get our answer? Well, I want less than or equal to zero. That's negative. Or I want it to be below the x-axis. And where's the only region? It's below the x-axis over here from negative infinity to negative 1. Very easy to do. So let's try number 2. Get the type. negative x, 2x cubed, and x, so it becomes x to the fourth. This is even negative, and we know what those look like. Get the roots. Ah, that doesn't give me a root. But I get, this becomes 1 half, m3, and we get negative 4. And that's what I'm going to sketch. There's negative 4, there's 1 half. See, that's my x-axis. This is my x-axis. It's the number line. That's my x-axis. So what I'm going to do is just use my x-axis and my graph to kind of get these. It's even negative, so it starts down, ends down. Don't forget here, that was m3. Can I include them this time? Yes, so I'm going to put little dots on those, solid dots. These are my critical numbers because that's where it crosses the x-axis. Those are critical for the graph. And that's what we call them critical numbers. So it starts down, right? And it has to go back down. M3 is going to wiggle its way through, and there's our graph. This time we want greater than or equal to zero, which means it is going to be above or equal to zero. And where does that only spot that occurs? Look at your graph between negative 4 and 1 half. I can include them this time. And there's my answer. Very easy to do. We've done this before. We just didn't call it this, you know. All right. Now, how is it so friendly for us? Well, let's take a look at number three. Now, the only thing I really must stress to you, you have to get it equal to zero. So this is going to become x squared minus 25 is greater than zero. So I factor it, x plus 5, x minus 5, greater than zero. And this is what I'm going to solve. My type, you already know this one, it's even positive. It's a parabola. My roots, we get those pretty easily. Negative 5 and positive 5. And this time I want to be above 0, so greater than 0. So I want it above the x-axis. And if I draw it out, negative 5 and 5. I cannot include them, so I might put open circles there because I can't include them. And it's a parabola. Starts up, ends up. And now where is my graph? Above the x-axis. That's what this means, above. Before negative 5, so negative infinity to negative 5. Both soft or from 5 to infinity. And there we get our answer. And this is how we do it a lot of times in calculus. This is what we're going to be doing in calculus next year. So you want to make sure you know this method. So let's try number four. All right, same idea. We have to get it equal to zero. Now, I am going to be Mr. Fancy Pants when I factor this. You guys are going to be like, oh, Mr. Warren, I'll teach us your, 
your Jedi ways to factor, and I'll be more than happy to come in for a tutorial. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to recognize this as a difference of squares, a squared minus b squared. So when I factor it, <coughs> we get x minus 3 plus 4, x minus 3 minus 4. Difference of squares. Convince yourself that that's correct, and if I go ahead, this is x plus 1, x minus 7, less than 0. So I answer some questions. What's, that's awful. What's the type? It's even positive. Looks like a parabola. My roots, negative 1, 7. So if I sketch it out, negative 1, 7. I cannot include them. And this time I want it to be below the x-axis. So there's my So I cannot include, so I make them open. And I draw my parabola. It's even positive. Remember, it starts up, ends up. It goes like this. There's my parabola. And now where is it below? Between negative 1 and 7. And there's your answer right there. Very easy to do. All right. Look these over if you need to. And when you're ready, go on to part 2.